Hello, my friends. I am so happy to have you here. Welcome to Artsy Not Fartsy. Today's project is no different than the last few projects in that it is a page for all and create, and it is going in my disc bound journal. But this time we make jelly prints for the background, and you will find links to the stamps and stencils I used in the description box below. So, let's make a mess. The first stencil we use for this print is called Lots of Stars, number 126, an Amsterdam neon green acrylic paint. I stencil green stars in all corners, and before I move my stencil, I stencil white on top of the green, because the neon green is quite translucent. You never know what you will get when jelly printing, and these stars won't be showing up well in the print, but I still like it. I wait for the stars to dry before I bring out the next stencil called Lots of Dots number 39 by Artur de Moi. I stencil black dots all over my jelly plate. Next I have a vibrant green and neon yellow paint. I add the paint in horizontal rows and I use my brayer not only to spread the paint but also to thin it out so I have a very thin coat of paint. I let my layers dry before I do the next layer. This time I add a thin coat of white paint. Then I place my paper on the jelly plate and rub it with my hands to make sure all that yummy paint ends up on my print. I pull my print and feel very satisfied with the texture and colors. I don't even get everything, but that's the thing about jelly prints. You get what you get. For my next print I use the same star stencil, but this time I want the stars to show, so I use black paint and let this layer dry. For my next layer I bring out a stencil called Totally Triangular number 99 by Artur de Moi. I use a darker green paint and stencil in almost all of those triangles. When the triangles are dry, I bring out neon yellow paint and brayer the paint in three rows before I use the neon green paint and make more rows overlapping the colors for an ombre effect. But I want more contrast, so I bring out a very dark green and brayer it on in three places. Since those neon colors are so translucent, I add some white paint over the lighter neon areas. I put my paper over the jelly plate and start rubbing the paper with my hands. And of course, I lost the footage of the actual pulling of the prints. But I do it twice and get two darker prints that I'm very happy with. So, I have my three green prints and a panel of black cardstock, along with an old book with beautiful text. I tear up those book pages, and when I have a pile of text strips, I ink up the edges with distress ink in vintage photo. I do the same with my green prints, I tear them up into strips and then I ink up the edges with archival ink in black soot. Next I bring out this dress collage medium and brush it on my black panel, add a text strip and seal it with a coat of collage medium and I do that all over my panel. I do the same with the green strips and add them on top covering the black that's left on my panel. I 
I end up loving this background and will make it again soon. I use scissors to chop off anything hanging off my panel. So let's create the main character and this time it's a stamp set called Red and Wolf number 639 by Janet Klein and I stamp them in VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Next we have a stamp set called Oh Christmas Tree number 609 by Janet Klein and I need those trees for my forest scene. This stamp set is called Go Wild, number 656 by Janet Klein, and I stamped the mushroom, flowers and raccoon. The last stamp set is called Rise Up, number 490, and I adore these borders by Janet Klein. So, let's color Red Riding Hood, starting with her face. And I use my Prima Complexion Watercolor Palette to give her a skin tone. I'm coloring the rest of my images with Arteza Real Brush Markers. You who have followed me know that I don't always get along with them, but I want to get as much use out of them as I can before I invest in other markers. Here I'm using two brown shades for her hair and then I color her mouth and flower eye with three pink markers. For the red riding hood I use a coral pink marker as my lightest shade, a couple of red markers along with a wine red. Dark colors can be scary when coloring, but they are needed. The harsh lines they make will look less harsh when you look at the finished image, and the shadows they give will bring life to your image. For the wolf I'm using four shades of grey, going from light to dark and back again, mapping out where I want shadows with the lighter greys and making them deeper with the dark grey. I also use the lighter grey for his tummy, blending it out with water. For the raccoon, I hope it's a raccoon, please correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have those in Sweden, but I use the same grey markers as on the wolf. I use three green markers for the first tree, and for the skinny tree I use two brown markers for the tree trunk. I color the mushrooms in two different color combos, one with the pink markers I used for the flower eye, and this one with the same reds as I used on the red riding hood. For all the flower stems and leaves I used the same green markers as I did on the tree and for the flower head on this one I used two teal markers. For this flower head I used the same pinks as I used earlier. I always try to keep the colors I chose in the beginning and not introduce new colors unless necessary. I adore these whimsical borders and I use the same green, pink, red and teal color combos as earlier.
You who know me know that I probably colored and fuzzy cut many, many of each image. And now it's time to put this page together. I put foam tape behind those bubbly borders and glue them coming in from the sides. Next, I glue down the trees and flowers flat, and when I get to the mushrooms and raccoon, I put foam tape behind them and glue them down as well. All the characters and mushrooms are popped up on foam tape, while all the trees and flowers are tucked in behind the borders flat. I glue down the wolf and red riding hood with foam tape looking at each other with kind eyes and then I add the rest of the mushrooms and flowers. I absolutely will do another of these backgrounds soon since I covered this one up almost completely. The last thing I do on this page is to glue the panel on to a slightly bigger panel of white cardstock and it will end up in my disc bound journal. And when I have done one or two new pages, we will do a flip through. But for now, this all and create mixed media art journal page is finished. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending some time with me. Until the next time, happy crafting.